Not only has Kylian Mbappe become one of the best players on the planet, he will go on to be talked about as one of the best of all time, and the evidence is there for all to see. Since Mbappe finished runner-up to Gianluigi Donnarumma on our next gen list in 2017, he's won 11 major club trophies and the World Cup, as well as coining a trademark celebration. Only the best do that. So how did Mbappe go from French phenomenon to a future great of world football? This is Level Up, Kylian Mbappe. Back in 2017, when we picked Mbappe on our next gen list, he was enjoying an incredible breakthrough season with his first club, Monaco. He'd already made a few cameo appearances the season before, becoming the youngest player and goalscorer in the club's history, breaking both records previously held by Thierry Henry. Coach Leonardo Jardim was the man to thrust Mbappe into the spotlight, trusting him as an integral part of his aggressively pressing 4-4-2 system, in a team full of players who went on to big things. Initially, Mbappe was used on either flank in his early appearances, but came to prominence as Radamel Falcao's partner in a front two, a man who Mbappe is credited as having a huge effect on his career. When out of possession, Mbappe became almost a free presser if you like, dropping into midfield and making use of his impressive energy to press the ball freely. This allowed the team to maintain their shape whilst also keeping Falcao as the team's focal point for a quick transition. In attack, Mbappe was asked to run beyond Falcao, using his searing pace to finish moves off, often playing on the last man. He tended to favour drifting out to the left and cutting back inside to penetrate the box, as Monaco adopted a 2-4-4 attacking shape. It was clear Mbappe had everything in abundance though, and it was actually his finishing and predatory instincts that stood out most of all. He was just as able to score solo efforts off the beating opponents as he was pouncing on passes or rebounds from his teammates, exemplified by the two hat-tricks he scored that season, goals coming from either foot, through one-touch finishes or after running with the ball. He also scored six goals in six Champions League games as Monaco went on an unprecedented run to the semi-finals. Just 18 years old, Mbappe finished the 16-17 season with a remarkable 26 goals in 44 matches, as Monaco pits super club PSG to the Ligue 1 title, their first in 17 years. That season, he also won the league's Young Player of the Year award and was named in the Team of the Year, establishing himself as the best young player in the world. It wasn't too long before Mbappe became Europe's most wanted. He eventually chose to move to PSG in a record-breaking move worth 180 million euros, making him the most expensive teenager in history. And quite simply, since moving to Paris, Mbappe's rise has been meteoric, becoming one of the best players on the planet. In the 17-18 season under Unai Emery, Mbappe was eased into the team, mostly used as a right winger in a 4-3-3 system. Initially, he was more of a provider than a goal scorer, playing on the last man to use his pace and tee up the main striker, Edison Cavani. His goal tally may have been down in the previous season, but his assists were up, and despite being named the Young Player of the Year and in the Team of the Year for a second time, as PSG won a domestic treble, it was clear there was still so much more to come from Mbappe. Enter Thomas Tuchel. Upon his arrival, the German made Mbappe the focal point of the attack, using him almost exclusively as the main striker, always playing furthest forward, always on the last man. But it wasn't so much about tactical deployment, more about personal development and coaching. Under Tuchel's tutelage, Mbappe worked in spatial awareness and movement. With Angel Di Maria and Neymar either side of him, Mbappe worked on making runs earlier and shaping them, moving on the blind side of defenders, so as not to become so reliant on his pace. That said, his dribbling improved too, with less push and run and more sharp changes of direction and trickery, as well as improving his composure when in front of goal. His numbers over the next three seasons are up there with the very best around, Tuchel's input and system helping Mbappe rise to the very top of the world game, where he continued under Mauricio Pochettino in 2021, becoming just the third player to score a Champions League hat-trick against Barcelona. In fact, at just 22 and having only been there four seasons, he made it to third place on PSG's all-time top goalscorer list and fourth on their all-time assist charts, not to mention an unrivaled trophy haul for a player so young. Unsurprisingly, Mbappe is the talisman for the French national team too, in the most gifted generation in their history. Since making his debut in 2017, Mbappe has been a near ever-present for Didier Deschamps' side, interestingly, often playing on the right of a front three. Olivier Giroud acts as a target man, feeding balls to the pacey Mbappe or Antoine Griezmann on the other side. It was in 2018 though that he became a household name worldwide. Mbappe was by far France's best player at the World Cup that year scoring four goals on his way to lifting the trophy, including a sensational strike in the final against Croatia. This made him just the second teenager in history to score in a World Cup final, after none other than football royalty Pelé, 
who took time to congratulate Mbappe himself. He also won the tournament's Best Young Player Award. And there it is, Kylian Mbappe's journey from next gen to now. That's how he levelled up. We're usually in the episode by examining what our feature player might achieve in the future. But honestly, when talking about Kylian Mbappe's future, we could be here forever. There's nothing he can't do. He's already won four league titles and the World Cup. No doubt he'll want to add a Champions League or two to that and lead France to more success, starting with the Euros perhaps. There's also a certain Norwegian that Mbappe will do battle with, no doubt, to determine who really will be the best in the world, post Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. But the real question is right now, just how many Ballon d'Ors will he win? And will he end up at Real Madrid? Or at another one of the super clubs? Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching, and keep an eye out for more in our Level Up series, as we look at how our next-gen alumni have developed.